The precise and robust 10 atmospheres was the sole concept of the 70s, which was the brand assurance of quality and strength, which today turned into hype. In front of us we have the newly launched Tissot PRX Mint, as people call it, and compared to it we'll have the automatic version with the tapisserie dial and the beautiful PRX chronograph in the reverse panda. This is a surprising design but also in fitment because there are quite a few differences between the normal ones and this tri compacts which is normal, has 42mm. But it's interesting to know these aspects before you decide to grab one. As you know, the PRX is on the market for a few years already, the concept becoming very fast the preferred choice of many people, mainly for three reasons. 1. The assurance of the brand, 2. The integrated bracelet concept and 3. The affordability of the platform. And indeed, if we look at their competitors, part of the Swatch umbrella, which offers mainly the same tier of watches or the same genre, you will notice that the Tissot PRX is slightly more affordable than any Mido or Hamilton. Now, what is important is to understand the value of this mint version. Before this launch, between the automatic and the quartz, the brand made a segregation, which is normal. The case is basically one-to-one -one with the case back exception. So the dial besides the movement should have made the difference in the price asked. The automatic has the tapisserie dial or the waffle and the date window which is outlined in metal, both features potentially being inspired from the Audemar Piguet Royal Oak. Now, the modern quartz version had a simplified dial without an embossed pattern, having only a somber style which wasn't that spectacular in the ideal lighting. But the mint pattern really stands out and brings value to the design and the layout, putting it closer to the automatic version from the complexity and the curiosity point of view. This is a fresh design and a statement watch due to the tonneau case combined with the warm summer turquoise tone. But more important, through the strong mint color of the dial which surprisingly blends very well with the case concept. Tissot definitely rides the wave here. I was thinking that the PRX concept came up exactly when the non-affordable brands like Gérard Perego or Audemars Piguet started to get more traction on the market. If the answer from Japan came up with the G-Shock concept of the GA series, China came up with the Audemars Piguet conversion kits, the Casiox. So the trend was confirmed. People liked the integrated bracelet concept. So Tissot came up with this forgotten C-Star concept of the 70s, being correctly positioned and balanced from the cost and quality perspective. The initial batch of PRX quotes was established below 10,000 units, but when the brand seen the impact of their integrated C-Star, they decided to supplement the production with over 100,000 units because the demand was very high in parallel launching as well the automatic version and later on the chronograph. So what's next Tissot, the PRX C-Star Diver? Can be, I would love such a design. The dial, the star of the show, has a turquoise green tone. As a remark, the Tiffany tone has less yellow in the palette, being more towards blue. This one has more of a greenish pigment that can transform to a green if it's associated with a green sweater or turn into blue if it's associated to the Mediterranean water. Now the differentiator is clearly the dial finishing and the fact that this new version comes with a vertical brushing instead of the common sunray or sunburst finishing. Clearly this one is more appealing firstly because it's reflective offering two personalities. One is the unified greenish warm turquoise tone and the other state which amplifies the brushing lines of the pattern making the dial more precious and complex. And second, the brushing rhythm of the dial, which communicates with the vertical brush of the front facet. When checking the time, the dial will retain you an extra 2 seconds to see how the light plays on the vertical pattern. So the vertical pattern is the new identity of the PRX. And speaking about new identity, the chronograph, as I mentioned, is the most affordable 7753 watch from this watch group offerings, but not the least quality. From the tone perspective, although trend-wise the panda dial seemed to be the no-brainer choice, I would challenge here and say that this blue-silver combo offers a better experience to the viewer 
from the contrasts and the rhythm perspective. As design, I'm really impressed by the volume, respectively the ratio between the width and the shape of the case and the height with the bezel ring. The ratio with a pronounced bezel feels to amplify more the design, which makes it more unitary. And honestly, I kind of like this more over the Monaco. The dial has an extremely well chosen combination of silver outlines of the sub dials and the mini track, which is very well contrasted by the dial surface. Now, the blue dial is very special, as well as the PRX Mint. We are previewing the same vertical pattern, which in the most reflective point turns into an electric blue tone, a thing that I've never seen on other watches before. Important to understand about the PRX Chrono is the fact that it's bigger as the specs are suggesting. And because the brand basically scaled up the case diameter, means that the bracelet was scaled as well in order to maintain that continuous line of the case facets with the bracelet. That happens in height as well because the case is significantly bigger and the bracelet is thicker as well. Unfortunately, the leather strap of the automatic and quartz cannot work on the chronograph case and that is super super disappointing because this model with a leather strap would have been wow wow wow. As specifications, the PRX Quartz and the Automatic have the following measurements. 40mm in diameter, 45mm as lug to lug, the Quartz has 10.5mm in height and the Automatic has 11mm. The difference is made through the thicker case back, having a 12mm lug width and 138 grams, where the Quartz has 130. And as were proofness both ensure 10 atmospheres, which means 100 meters or resistance. The Automatic has the Powermatic 80111 with 80 hours power reserve, where the Quartz has the ETA F06115 with an end of life indicator, which reflects in the swipe of the seconds hand in batches of 5 seconds instead of the normal 1 second tick. The chronograph, being scaled proportionally on the horizontal axis, has 42mm in diameter with 47mm as lug to lug. Having 14.5mm in height, 13mm as lug width, having as well 100m water resistance and weights 184 grams. Inside we have the automatic A05H31 labeled movement which is actually the ETA7753 chronograph module, with a date adjusting feature on the left hand side similar to the Hamilton Intramatic chronograph. As wearability, the profile of the Tissot PRX is pretty slim and the integrated concept has a reduced lug to lug of 45mm and as a result this tonneau volume lays down very well on the wrist. But sometimes because the pronounced corner amplifies the case size combined with the continuous white bracelet, the watch feels big on the wrist. And I feel as well that the brand should consider making besides a PRX Diver a mid-range version between the latest size and the actual 40mm one. And then on the wrist, the chronograph is pretty robust and competes with the Hoyer Monaco, but the PRX is more unitary. It is sculpted in a way to look extremely well on the wrist, similar to an AP or the Gerard Perregaux Laureato. Everything from the tonneau case with the pronounced bezel to the rectangular pushers and the dramatic taper of the thicker bracelet makes it very appealing, not to mention the blue dial and the silver and white accents. Which reminds me as well of the Bulgari Octo Finissimo chronograph. And as a collecting priority, I still believe that to stay close to the original C-Star concept of the 70s, the Quartz PRX Mint offers the best value for the money. With a more sophisticated dial, I think this is the first watch to pick to start the PRX journey. And then, as a second priority, I would choose the PRX Chronograph, as I love the proportions ratio between the height of the case and the bezel against the width of the tonneau shape. Not to mention once again the superb reflective dial with reversed panda accents. And in the third position obviously I would choose any of the PRX Powermatic 80 models, which honestly I was lured for a period by the solid gold bezel version with a fluted pattern. And I don't know if this is a thing of uh, age or not, but what do you think about the PRX priority purchase? Do you see the Quartz version as a no-brainer against the quality versus the price of the Powermatic 80 and the chronograph? Please let me know in the comments section. And as usual, if you're new around, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be brave, Bob. Stay safe.